Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Go Mode Podcast Mentor Tournament 2020. We are in round four this week, which is the first open week of the tournament. I am CJ. I am joined by Kaysiden. Our runners are It's Otter, Hub, our tracker, Ricky of Co- uh, Kokiri, and our restreamer, Amarith. Kaysiden, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Um, you know, this is, we're now in week four of the mentor tournament. Uh, if you haven't been, uh, joining along with us each week, each runner has a mentor that will kind of go through the seed with them as they make their way through this open seed. The first three weeks were Ambrosia. Week three was a little interesting because there was no mentors and we saw a little bit of difference in, uh, the rankings going on there because you know when you have a mentor versus not a mentor it's definitely going to affect how you play but yeah now we're in open mode um it's been a really fun time Kazden, you just won a match yesterday if i'm remembering correctly i did yes so yeah we are just waiting for the runners here to get started it's just going to be a standard seven seven defeat ganon open seed both runners are one and two at this point, I believe. So we are underway. Let's see what we get. Both uh, runners choosing to. That's not too surprising. Uh, it generally seems to be about 50 50 whether people go Uncle or Sank start. You see Hub with a very nice palette shuffle. If you're wondering why it kind of looks like Autumn on Hub's game, you could change the palette around on this game. One of the options on the Randomizer website. Just adds a little bit of variety to the to the visual experience. Doesn't change anything about the game. I'd say this one for a palette shuffle actually came out quite nice. Sometimes it can look a little weird. Otter having a little bit of difficulty. I don't think got that tree pull. Having some fighting going on with the blue guards there also means that Otter is on one heart. So has to be a little bit careful. These green guards will do half a heart of damage. So have to be careful. Make sure you don't get hit here. And not much found in the uncle start. So it looks like we're going to head over to Sanctuary. It looks like Otter taking the, as we find a glove in Sanctuary, Otter taking the time to kill one more guard. That might set him up to check a tier two tree pole as they make their way over to the Lost Woods area. And Hub going straight to the back of the escape. You know, I like this play. Both, when you find both of them gloves, going there, actually. Yeah, when you find gloves and you already have bombs, there's a chance back here you're going to find something useful. It's right by Sanctuary. You're pretty much always going to go there, save and quit again anyway. So you have the gloves. Why not check it real quick? Yeah, I, I like it. As we do find a small key, but neither runner probably going to go and check that dark cross. I personally wouldn't check Dark Cross until you check the front of Escape because it might still be a map. We don't know that for sure. Unless, I don't believe Sanctuary was a map. I don't think it was. Looks like we're going to get our first look at the Lost Wood. Yeah, after that minor deviation, we're just following both runners doing the same thing hub or otter taking the time to kill a couple of these guards again trying to get to that four enemies that you have to kill to get a higher tier tree pull seeing what it might be so we're gonna see that here and we're just gonna kind of go through 300 rupees at the mushroom spot that's always nice to find some money early and the tree pull that was set up is just some small magic so Nothing big, but with that 300 rupees in the Lost Woods and flippers in Hideout, um, they're not really going to be hurting for money. They already have some bombs that they can buy. Yeah, flipper is one of those items early on that doesn't give you a ton of locations because you still need so many things for Swamp and Ice Palace. It does unlock Waterfall Fairy and Hobo in Logic. But most of the time, when I find flippers early, I'm starting to get worried about that ag of play where you're going to have to use the flippers and hookshot to get to the 
uh, left side of the dark world. With the glove, not as big of a concern, but definitely something to kind of creep into your mind of why are those clippers yeah, there? If yeah, if they find a hook shot, that, that definitely becomes a lot stronger pop. We do find the Moon Pearl in Blind's Hideout. At the same time with that Agaplay, we're also only one item away from Dark World access, so it's looking kind of... Both runners having plenty of money this seed to check everything, and with the Moon Pearl in Kakariko Village, that does set up nicely... Uh, well, we have flippers, so it doesn't really matter, but it would have set up nicely for a water walk. With the flippers, I probably would expect the runners to go and check the Zora area after South Shore. Yeah, I think that's that would be a good play. I'm sure one of them, if not both, will be doing it. So let me ask you, Case, what do you like to see early when you're doing a seed? When you're going through Kakariko and you're doing all this stuff, what are some items that you're really excited to see early on in the game that you don't have to hunt for later? Um, boots are always nice to see. Um, they don't really unlock a whole lot, but they just make the gameplay so much nicer. Um, I also like to see a flute in Kakariko, so you can just activate it right away. You don't have to worry about routing that back in. Um, either that or I'd like to see a set of items that gives you kind of a clear idea of where your next progression might be. Yeah, no flute, but we did find a bottle, which we can turn right around and have the runners turn into sick kids. So that's something you can mark off your tracker. Don't have to come back if you find a bottle later on. You've already done that check. So that is nice to find early on as well. Yeah, that's another <clears throat> really great early find. Stops you from orphaning one location in CAC. Runners taking slightly different paths because they use that three bomb drop to go to the back of escape. They ran out of bombs before Chicken Hut because there wasn't any more bombs in the village. So both runners did have to jump into that shop, grab a 10 pack of bombs for 50 bucks. Pretty, pretty close right now. They're right behind one another. So we're going to go check out library and race game and we'll see if there's any divergence after that. The hub opting to run it um, blind. I've been seeing more and more people run it, uh, checking it first. Uh, do you have any opinion? I would say in this scenario, you haven't really gotten much, so you're just kind of hoping that something's back here. The nice thing, and we'll see if our runners utilize this, is you can use that bee in a bottle that we found to do mini Moldorm Cave, but we also find the hook shot, which is great for that mini Moldorm Cave. So yeah, it's definitely worth running it blind. And it does look like Hub is going to South Shore. I'm sure Otter is going to follow suit. Not really a reason to go over to Sahashala and Eastern right now. And I don't think either runner has done a map check. So we don't even know if it's a crystal or a pendant. Yeah, I haven't seen a map check yet. I'm keeping my eye out for it. I'm sure we'll see one pretty soon. But it kind of makes sense that they haven't done it yet. They don't have any items that are really giving them clear progression of where to go. So... Until you get something, like if you get a bow, then you might want to, if Eastern is going to be your next. Yeah, interesting that Otter opts not to go into the dam and grab those items. Perhaps thinking after this, I'm going to go and do a Gina's Cave anyway. So I'll grab the dam then, or perhaps just forgot about this check. I, I have seen that, that this routing before where you skip the dam and you route it in with a Gina. It can make it feel a little better that that way 
You're not doing Agena as a one-off check. I think overall time-wise, it's probably pretty. Yeah, we know nothing really so far here in South Shore. It's been pretty barren, so we'll see if Ice Rod Cave has anything, or maybe those flippers will unlock something for us up in the Zora area. A uh, question in chat. The runners are able to communicate with their mentors during the match. So the runners and their mentor are in a chat room together talking about the seed as they go through it. They are screen sharing. So in real time, the mentors are kind of giving them advice. If maybe they don't know a minor glitch, the mentors can talk them through it or just discuss routing or keep their, you know, mentality kind of in the right place. It's really easy when you're racing, especially during a restream. You could be a little nervous and things like that. These mentors are very experienced, linked to the past runners, and so they're kind of there to help them out in every way possible. And Otter's heading straight over to eastern area. Uh, looking maybe like a check of the island and then Hobo. I was thinking Eastern too. Yeah, I, I, I like I like this play actually. This is pretty heads up to go check the island from. Yeah, this is nice. I don't know if it's that much faster to save and quit to Link's house and then go check Hobo versus just jump down from Ice Rod Cave, but especially with this new save and quit delay removed in the most recent update of the randomizer, it feels a lot nicer to save and quit than it used to a week ago. Yeah, it's it's not a huge amount of time, but it sure feels so much. Again, we're just kind of waiting for the seed to crack. We haven't really gotten anything that points us in a specific direction. We don't have items to do any of the dungeons right now. We don't have the, you know, Aga 1 direction. So we're looking for something that gives us a pointer to where we need to what, go. One option that is out there is they could go up to the mountain. They do have a hook shot. They do have a glove. They don't have the lamp, but if they know how to do the dark room, they can go up there. There's quite a few items that could. Yeah, and maybe if you're making that play, you're just saying, okay, maybe the lamp is on Agena, and so that mountain is in logic. We just haven't found that item yet, which is a fair. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked to see it here in the Zora area either, possibly on Zora. Surprising still not to see a map check, because personally, if there is a pendant eastern, I'm a little bit more inclined to dive it early, because I am hoping I just don't have to go back. And just bombs on Zora. The seed is not wanting to crack open to... And there's our map check. We got a red crystal at desert and a pendant at Tower of Hair. Otter now checking the down. I think it's going to come down to who's going to go up to the mountain first, because it looks like that's going to be where our progression... We do see a map check. We see second map check. It's a tough call. You know, at this point, you can sequence break to the mountain, but it does look like Hub is going to go check out that eastern area. Uh, 
Yeah, they may just be looking for that lamp before committing to going up to the mountain, especially now that they know that Tower of Hera is a pendant. Even though they can't get there yet, um, that may dissuade them from going there and try and route it in later once they get Dark World Act. And, and there's there is our, our there is our lamp and our bow. So that is actually a really nice find right before Eastern. That puts all of Eastern into logic. Yeah, I'm sure Hub is going to go straight in there and start working on getting his first crystal. And Otter choosing to gamble up the mountain instead. You know, I don't hate the mountain play because since Tower of Hera is a pendant, you don't mind as much that you can't get there because you don't have to do it. You go up, right. you've got the hookshot, you've got the glove, you might as well go up and check those items because in a perfect world, you're never even going to have to go to Hera anyway. Yeah, that's a really good point. And depending what progression they find, it, it, it is going to be out of logic since he doesn't have the lamp yet, but we know where it is. Um, it's going to get found at some point. So whatever he finds up here could definitely give him an edge if there's anything really good. Yeah, unfortunately, I know there's a lot of people that don't like to visit that eastern area until they have a bow, especially when it's a crystal. And the bow and lamp both being with Sahasrila, that's kind of a place that is a little bit tricky because you really don't want to go there without those items. Yeah, I, I tend to fall into that camp myself. I, I would probably be making the same play that Otter is doing, um, but it looks like Hub is definitely making the right call within the logic. Yeah, and doing these dark caves without a sword is pretty difficult. A lot of people learn how to navigate those dark rooms with a sword. So using the boomerang, good job by its otter, and finding the fire rod as a reward. Yeah, that's a real nice find. That's a really good item because that gives us our fire source for, say, Desert Palace. If we find a way in Eastern, for example, to go over to Desert Palace, Hub may take that bait where Otter would have the fire source if we'll clear the dungeon if it's not boots locked. And we see Ice Rod on Spectacle Rock. Well, Hub still does have a fire source because he does have that lamp. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot about that. I just got so excited about the fire rod that I completely threw that and out of my memory. You're not going to be having an Ice Rod hunt today sitting up there on the mountain, but we don't know if Turtle Rock is going to be required. Yeah, I find that Ice Rod on a visual location like that is always nice because you typically aren't going to do Turtle Rock till later in the seed. You know, now you know that you need Mirror to grab it, and when you're ready to go to Turtle Rock, you just need to grab that Mirror, go up there and use those items, and or use the mirror, grab the ice rod, and you're good to go. So it's kind of a, a re relaxing feeling to know, at least I know where the ice rod is. Right, and, and being there on Spec Rock, that's one of those locations that you're, you're going to see in pretty much every single seed you play at some point. As Otter goes through Paradox Cave, we have Hub... Checking out the back of Eastern, so we're going to see if the back of Eastern is holding any treasures. <sighs> we're still, I mean, we did find Bow, which led us into Eastern, and then beyond that, we still don't have a lot of information on where to go next. That Fire Rod is a little telling, but we don't have a way to get to the Dark World, so still looking for that Dark World access. I'm sure our runners would love to find a sword, And there too. it is, the Titan's Mitts in Paradox Cave, which is a great spot to find it with the Moon Pearl, can jump down after Spiral Cave and check the Dark Death Mountain checks, including Hookshot Cave, because we already have the Hookshot. That is a wonderful find. It really is. It, it saves you that extra trip up the mountain. Yeah, we'll have to see as the seed progresses. At the end of it, 
Which of these routes paid off more? Right now, it looks like the Death Mountain play is paying off a little bit more because there's always that chance that pod is required. And if you have the mirror, it is faster to do pod and Eastern together with the mirror. So we'll see if this Death Mountain play ends up being a, a really huge advantage or, you know, if something else comes up as we find the Red Cane in Spiral Cave. So a lot of progression up on the mountain. It is a lot of progression, but it's not really immediate progression at the same time. The interesting thing is that's a lot of the requirements for Turtle Rock all on the mountain. You have Fire Rod, Ice Rod, Cane of Samaria, and Titan's Mist, which are and all we required. we got a map check. Uh, we got a Pendant Skullwoods, Green Pendant Ice, and a Red Crystal in Thieves Town. So that does mean Turtle Rock is required, and... With all of the items for Turtle Rock being on the mountain already, that starts to become a spot that's a little bit interesting that all of those items were kind of grouped together right there. We'll see if that leads either runner, once they find the medallion and the hammer, to go into Turtle Rock maybe a little bit earlier than we would see normally. And they're also going to need a sword to be able to use that medallion, assuming they find it. Yeah, unless we're about to see the craziest group of checks I've ever seen, I don't think we're going to see Turtle Rock quite yet. Yeah, that would be a little nuts. It is possible, though. And they do have a decent amount of health, so I wouldn't put it out of the question if they find the sword. If, if Otter finds a sword and the hammer, I would definitely be tempted, even not to full clear it because you don't have the ice rod, I would definitely be tempted just to peek to see what's in there because that would be crazy amount of turtle rock hints up on the mountain, at least for me. Yeah, definitely. And we didn't say anything. Hub doing a really good job on the Armos fight, flying through Eastern without an issue. No real progression there, so Hub following... It's Otter up the mountain, going to find the fire rod, see the ice rod, all of these checks, and there's our sword. So we don't have a hammer to get into Turtle Rock, but that's the only thing we would need, uh, as well as the medallion, to get in there um, on a second trip up. Yeah, that's really good information to have, so you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, you know where the ice rod is, so you will need the mirror if you're going to... Now, I did not catch, did Otter not go and look at what the Turtle Rock Medallion was? He did, it's Ether. Oh, okay, I just missed that. So now we're going to see both of our runners kind of swap places here. Hub's going to get a bunch of items, Otter's going to get a bow and a lamp, and not much else. And really, from the knowledge we have, do we have a late Agaseed developing? No, sorry, Titan's Mitts. What am I thinking? I'm losing. I apologize. I played a seed right before this where I had lovely logic of uh, finding an ice rod, and I think it melted my brain for this comment. Yeah, that, that seed was some. So it is a little bit interesting for its otter to dive eastern then with Dark World access. You find the bow and the lamp. I guess they wanted to stay in logic because they knew Titan's Mitts were up on the mountain, so something had to be over here, either lamp or flute. So I can see right. the logic there, but when you do if you are gambling that it's lamp or flute and you know it's there, maybe they're hoping it's flute. But I would go straight to the Dark World and try to loop in Eastern and Pod together. Yeah, and just, just keep in the back of your mind that you know that you have something over in this. At the same time, going this way, getting the bow, you know, that's... W without a bow, that makes Pod, you know, a little bit tougher of a call to wait for since you don't have that yet. But now that he has it, he's already over here. I, I, I can see why you would want to just you're already here just go in and clear it chat coming up with fun scenarios agus still p could be required if pyramid fairy has the hammer 
Yeah, leave it to chat to always figure out a way to keep Aga in the picture. I will and say it is a possibility. It has happened to me, and I had to learn how to do bomb duplication midstream because I was not about to go and do Aga. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's see what all of these items are. Both the runners just catching up here. We'll see at the end of these loops whether Hub finishes up the mountain first or Otter finishes up Eastern first to see kind of who's got a little bit of an advantage. I don't believe Hub has checked Agena, so Otter does have that check ahead of Hub. But I would imagine we're about to see some Dark Village uh, shenanigans. And with the Fire Rod, do you want to go into Skull Woods even though it's a pendant? That's a real tough call. Um, I, I wouldn't blame either of them for going in there, um, but I also wouldn't blame them for skipping it because it's a pendant. That, that's a very tough call. Uh, as Hub unfortunately doesn't quite get the hook shot through the block. There's a way you can time the hook shot and your inputs on that block to clip into the block and walk through it so you don't have to fall down those stairs. It's a little bit quicker, but even if you fail it, you can just go right upstairs and do it kind of normal. So not the end of the world. Hub finishing up Paradox or Hookshot Cave here to finish up Dark Death Mountain as Otter doing a good job walking through the back of Eastern. These areas back here can be a little bit tricky with these enemies. They like to move around. They like to not get hit. So you can lose a more time than you would think in these back rooms of Eastern Palace. Yeah, especially with those Stalfos. They like to just hop away or turn directions at the last moment right when you think you're going to get that hit in. And unfortunately, that last red, uh, Igor, I believe, is the name of it. I could be wrong. Uh, does close close its eye right as the last shot is coming. You have to wait for it to open again. And we're going to see our most knights. So it looks like Hub a little bit ahead in the current route. But I do believe Otter does still have that Agena check as an advantage. So really, really close through the first 25, 26 minutes of this race. And the otter just finishing up his armos fight. It looks like we might be seeing our first dip into Village of Outcast. Or possibly Skull Woods. We'll see in just a second. Yeah, personally, I'm a fan of the Skull Woods play here. You have Cane of Samaria, so that middle room isn't too bad. You can at least check the front chest of Skull Woods, even if you don't dive the back. And in open, there's a little bit more draw to Skull Woods than there was in the Ambrosia weeks. In Ambrosia, you're guaranteed to have an item on Moth. But in open, the two items can be anywhere in the dungeon, which does add a little bit more value to that Skull Woods play. So Hub opting not to go into Skull Woods, see if Otter makes the same play or goes up there. Otter making the same choice to go down into the village. Yeah, not quite sure what Hub is looking for by full clearing the village first. You have all the items. Oh, you're looking for hammer. Of course, you don't want to dive Thieves Town without a hammer. And right. 
The question now becomes, that's another reason why maybe that Skull Woods play would stick out as something the runners might want to do sooner rather than later, because, and it looks like Hub might be going up that direction, you want to kind of check everything that's around you before you go into... I, I think I see what Hub was doing. I think he was probably looking for an extra sword or something else to, just to make the, the moth fight a little bit nicer. Going, going up against moth with fighter sword is not always the most pleasant experience. That's for sure. We do luckily have half magic and fire rod, and that is a weapon that does damage Mothula. So we, uh, Hub and Otter do both have that luxury if they're going to go and just full clear that dungeon now. Looks like Hub is trying to decide whether to go back to front or clear the front first, decides on clearing the front. And I think that's a little bit of mentor intervention, saying, you know, let's clear the front first. We probably are going to find an item up here anyway. And if that item gives us great progression, then we don't even have to do the boss. So let's check out that first check and kind of see it is the big key. So we'll get a look at the big chest here as Otter decides just to dive into Thieves Town. Yeah, so this gives us a little bit of divergence and see who's going to find progression first. There's definitely a lot of different ways to route Skull Woods. You can check that middle chest first, and if it has a key, you can use that to kind of romp the front. You, If it has your item, that's a good thing to find. We do find powder, so that's a little bit interesting, but I'm thinking that because they're looking for items, their plan is if they have to go to that middle room, they're probably gonna go to the back as well and just fight Moth, which is why Hub right. did not check the middle of skull woods into the front like you normally would see in a in an open scene otter choosing to do only the first four checks in thieves town i like this play it doesn't lose you that much time to go back in and run through the main area to go and get to the back of thieves town you could check the yeah, first and without four. that without the hammer that just it, it's it's much more attractive to just treat those first four checks almost as overworld, get yeah, them, move on, and come back. That way you're not diving the entire dungeon and then dive again. Yeah, maybe if you find three items in the front, you say, okay, there's probably not an item in the chest, so we'll dive it, but... Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. And Hub now dipping into Thieves Town as well. See how far in he decides to go. Yeah, so again, we're kind of in this limbo. The seed has done this to us a couple times now, where we're just waiting for the seed to tell us where to go. Yeah, it's giving you a couple little breadcrumbs, but there's really nothing concrete. Ice Palace, maybe? Uh, I believe that would be in logic right now. I mean, you have, but they don't have the hammer. You don't have a hammer, so that that's also a rough call. Yeah, I mean, hammer is locking so much right now. It's locking ice palace. It's locking pod. Mirror and hammer are locking uh, swamp palace. So, just looking for something. You want some kind of inkling of where to go, and we do find a master sword, which is nice to have. Otter doing a play that I'm a big fan of. If you grab the smith and you find hammer along the way here, you can run up to pod and the monkey will eat the smith. And you can get rid of the smith that way without having to turn him in if you are able to find hammer um, over here in Hype Cave or something like that. Yeah, that's actually a trick I just learned yesterday. Before I thought if you had the smith, you're kind of stuck with him until you turn him in. Yep, if you take the smith over to Kiki over there in the pod area, Kiki will eat the frog, and you'll be left with just the monkey, and it'll reset the blacksmith back to its location over in the dark world. Which, even if you're not going to 
do pod is a nice little trick to know sometimes because sometimes you grab the blacksmith and along the way you just decide ah, i don't want this blacksmith to be with me anymore there is a way yeah. to get rid of it yeah i think just walking into most dungeons too will make him go i think he only sticks with you through drop downs if that's correct yeah chat pointing out hub is checking out the rest of thieves town so we're gonna get a uh, full clear mostly we're looking still for a compass and the small key so that big uh big chest is not out of the picture quite yet but you're kind of hoping you don't have to do it and that your play to do pot or thieves town was just a safe one and you made the right call yeah so really hoping we don't see that small key hopefully it's just locked away in that chest and we see Otter turning in the blacksmith. Hub does have to be a little bit careful, down to two and a half hearts. Pulling out the powder, though, so he knows there's an anti-fairy right up here that he could use to refill. So that's a pretty heads up. Play. Yeah, there's a couple of really good spots to powder in Thieves Town if you know about the locations. This is one. In the basement, the top left skull has a bunny beam underneath it. So if you use the powder on that, it will also... Yeah, it's good to know those locations when you're in need of a of a quick heal before heading up to blind. Sorry, we had a, a burst in of the tiny human in my house, so I apologize for that, but I'm back. No small key, so we're good in Thieves Town. Thieves Town does not require the hammer. Unless Blind decides to drop the small key, can that happen? No, that cannot. Because of the key logic, the game assumes you do the dumbest thing possible. And if you do the dumbest route possible, you cannot have a small key on Blind in the worst possible route. So if that chest down there does not have a small key and you still don't have one, then you know that that small key is locked in the big chest. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, Hub is using the Cane of Samaria to fight Blind, and I'm sure you've seen that. But Hub did post a pretty hilarious little clip of one of his races using that Cane of Samaria with only five hearts on Blind. It's in the Discord for the Go Mode podcast. It's pretty entertaining. I recommend you go give it a look if you haven't yet. Yeah, I'd second that. That's a very entertaining clip to watch. And Otter is choosing to go ahead and full clear Skull Woods. As we're seeing Otter do Skull Woods, so both runners opting to complete a dungeon here. Otter going to the Skull Woods completion as Hub completes Thieves Town. Thieves Town a little bit nicer because it's a crystal, but that Fire Rod is very tempting to finish up this area. Yeah, I, I, I like I like the play to finish Skull Woods at this point with the early Fire Rod. It's just going to be bugging them for the rest of the seed if they don't. Well, and with finding that Master Sword on Stumpy for Otter, that gives you a little bit more comfort to fight this boss too. Fighter Sword Moth is not a fun fight, but now you have Master oh. Sword, Fire Rod, Blue Mail. It, you feel a little more comfortable at this point. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. And Otter having a very nice Moth fight goes down very quickly and smoothly. And just getting a bottle with a B for his efforts. Yeah, unfortunately, still not finding anything. We're getting to that point in the seed where, uh, which dungeon do you dive that you don't want to dive? You know, we've got Ice Palace as a green pendant. Pod is a crystal. You can get into both of those dungeons. You can't beat either of them without the hammer, but you definitely can enter them. And it's ne never a nice seed if the hammer happens to be hiding in either of those dungeons, which is entirely possible.
before chat gets too upset with me. No, I did not roll this seed. I know I've, I'm on a bit of a bad streak. <laughs> I've had a couple of couple of rough seeds over the past couple of days, but I did not roll this one. So I, I fully remove myself from the blame on that one. I didn't roll it either, so it's not my fault. I guess the question becomes, in your opinion, what would you dive first? Would you dive pod first or would you dive ice first in this scenario? I think I'd be tempted to dive ice just due to the early flippers. Um, the early flipper checks they've already done didn't really pay off. So I would think that those flippers have to be pointing to something. Um, normally, I would say pod because there's more items. But just given the early flippers, I, I would probably lean towards ice. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I would almost always choose Palace of Darkness, but it's a very slow dungeon, as is Ice Palace. But we were given Titan's Mints, Flippers, and a Fire Rod, which is a very unique set of items that allows you to beat Ice Palace. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's a Mirror in Ice Palace that would then get me up to a couple other checks, as well as get me the Ice Rod or the Hammer. But I am kind of feeling that that would be my play, which is maybe a little unconventional for this but i both of us kind of agree on it yeah even even being a um pendant dungeon i, I still think the ice is probably where i would go but with pod being a crystal I, I could definitely see the choice to go there instead does look like hub might be following suit checking out bumper ledge and then diving into skull woods and i would assume otter is going to oh there is the hammer on mirror ledge or bumper ledge i don't know if if otter checked that i missed it that is huge. i didn't see it i don't think otter has checked that but yeah that's really big information um, but now it's turned from a hammer hunt into a cape hunt. Yeah, where is that cape? Oh yeah, that, that's very, very good information to pull out early. And I like this call from Hub. You haven't done escape yet. You know that your progression is locked by a cape. So let's check the areas early in the game where the cape could have been hidden. You know, this has been open to us for a long time. Rather than starting to do crazy things like dive ice palace and dive pod, let's just check the back of escape, check all of this, setting up for some death warps here. That's why Hub is taking that damage there. I really like this play as a first check once you know that that hammer is cape locked. Yeah, I like it as well. And I, I really like the, the heads up play to be taking some damage so you don't get all the way to the bottom you know 12 hearts and be like oh well now i gotta sit stand here and take damage for two minutes and yeah, the nice thing is green guards will always do a half heart of damage to you no matter what your mail is if i'm remembering correctly and with the hookshot and boomerang you can stun that green guard in the basement so that he doesn't come chasing after you you stun him you kill the ball and chain guard get your item and then let that green guard just poke you down slowly to get you that death warp yeah, and you can use the ball and chain guard. I think with blue armor, it might still do only half a heart. But if you're on green armor, it'll do a full heart of damage. So you can use that to death warp a little quicker sometimes. And we've started our fetch quest. So we did find a shovel. You know, fetch quests are always one of those things that they can kind of lead anywhere. Shovel could leave, lead to mushroom, which could lead to cape. Or even better, Mushroom could give you Mirror, and then you have to use Powder to <laughs> get Cape. Yeah, that, that, would, that, that would just be evil. Tub's got to be a little careful here. manages to get that green guard to go away just long enough to kill the ball and chain guard and do his yeah and we did find a map and a small key so we do have to go to 
the Dark Cross, there is an item there, so I would be shocked if Hub doesn't check that out. Otter coming up on blind. Nice first two phases there. Yeah, getting off script, but handling the fight very nicely. Still takes it down with minimal issue. So it does look like Hub opting to not check that shovel at least for now, maybe checking Agina and then the shovel after? Yeah, without the mirror, it makes routing some of these checks in a little awkward. It looks like yep. Otter's heading north, gonna check bumper ledge. Um, that's going to check. pay off. That's going to pay off very well for him. Doesn't know that yet, but it's going to be a very good check to make. You know, even though we can't actually get the hammer. The seeds like this can really scramble your brain because in a perfect world, you wouldn't want to come down to this desert area without the purple chest. But getting back to grab that purple chest, um, very difficult. Um, Otter's does... walking right past the bumper ledge, so that's that could come back to bite him. Yeah, it does look like Hub found the book. Did Hub find the book in Dark Cross? Is that why we have it now? I, I didn't catch where we actually got the book, but that would make sense. I believe it had to have been there or somewhere in Escape. On chat saying, yes, uh, it was in Dark Cross. So this, I mean, you can check Agina with this. This is a good play. Desert is another crystal dungeon, so fair enough to check. You need to get it out of the way. Hopefully you don't need the boots and you can just clear it. And we got the big key. So yeah, we will be. As long able as there's to not a desert. small key on here, it's in logic. If the small key's up here, you can still beat it. And we find bombos. I don't think we need, know if we need bombos yet, but it might be needed from. We have a catfish check coming from Otter. We do find everything, so Desert doesn't need the boots unless we need bombos later on, as Catfish just spits out ten arrows. chat wanting to see the cape on the torch in desert but unfortunately for chat the seed is not that mean And that is our second item, so we know that the cape is not going to be in desert. Hub definitely going to go and beat the boss of desert really quick. That also does unlock our big bomb. Now, normally you would need the hammer or defeat Aga 1 to turn in that big bomb. We'll see if either of the runners or if Hub, after getting this, knows how to do the bomb duplication. Uh, we'll need to find a mirror, I believe, in order to do that trick, but if we're able to find a mirror, that is something that is possible as a way to kind of skip maybe some logic and maybe get a leg up. Even if they're going to take the aggro route, they will need the mirror to do it in. That's very true. So finding a mirror could really point to that big bomb being an important play. as we see Otter now heading to the Palace of Darkness area. We'll see what's over here. Um, definitely still looking for plenty of items. Hub doing a good job finding that book in Dark Cross might not be as huge if we do find uh, Flute and Mirror because Otter will be able to get into Desert that way as well. But right now, that Dark Cross play looking pretty big. 
Yeah, and the, the problem for Otter is Otter did not check bumper ledge. I don't believe, at least I didn't see it. So Otter might be thinking the hammer is hiding in here and could be going on a wild goose chase. Pub doing a good job of getting two of those land mows with the fire rod. It takes two fire rod shots, and a two cycle is a very nice job on that desert palace. Yeah, clean that up very nice. It's very quick. Hub going over to do the shovel, having a little bit of an issue. Their menu right now is not very well set up to get to that shovel very nicely. As um, we see Otter going through pod. Man, what a stalling. Like, it's just a stalling seat. It just makes you wait and wait and wait and wait. Every time we seem to find one piece of, of progression, it really isn't leading to that kind of collapse of everything behind it. There, that explosion of green on your map tracker when you finally get that one item. Hub knows where it is. He just doesn't know where the item to access the Now, if the cape ends up being in pod, Otter will have access to the hammer, but doesn't know where it is. And the hub does not know where the cape is yet because he hasn't gone over there. So it's going to be very interesting to see who ends up... Yeah, finding the cape in Palace of Darkness could be really big because that may remind Otter, oh, I haven't checked bumper ledge. We're running out of things to check. Let's just go over there and see what it is. Otter is setting up a death warp. I... Yeah, without a mirror, those spikes do one heart of damage no matter what mail you're, uh, mail you're on. So setting up in that room is a nice place to get yourself down to low health. Uh, it does look like Hub forgot to check Agina after Desert, so that's where Hub was headed to. We know Agina was nothing. Does look like Otter setting up to do a hammer yump here. Did find the big key in the front of Pod. So with one small key, can hammer yump here and get out of the race. So we'll see if he's able to pull it off. A very nice hammer yump with the two bomb throw to open that um, big chest or early. All using select buffers. No, that was a very nice hammer yump. Very, very well executed. Even with all those buffers, it's very easy to mess up that trick. So very well done by Otter. And we do find another bow. And Yeah, that bow doesn't help us much, but having silvers is nice for the end of the game and for Misery Meyer, along with a couple of other bosses along the way. Yeah, no, no one's ever upset to see some. I do 
Who's enjoys seeds where both the bows are locked in the Eastern Palace and Pod area? It seems so so counterintuitive, but we did have our first bow in Sahaz closet, and second one was bow locked behind that in Pod. So always always fun when the seeds seed plays plays that fun game with you. Man, my brain is still melting. I can't I can't stop it. So we're going to see Otter go into escape now. Going to find that book. The runners pretty much have checked everything except for Ice Palace for us. We know that Skull Woods over here has nothing. We know that Pod really doesn't have any items. We know that Desert doesn't really have any items. Yeah, we are starting to run out of checks, so we might see them converge on Ice Palace if that ends up Going back to us talking about it earlier, I I still think I like that Ice Palace play. I mean, obviously we know that nothing's in pod, but if you think about it, you need the hammer, and you know now that the hammer needs the cape. So once you get that cape, you can beat a bunch of dungeons. You don't really have to beat Ice Palace once you find the cape. It's a pendant, so it maybe adds a little bit more incentive to go there we'll see if hub again chooses to go there instead of palace of darkness because we know that palace of darkness other than silvers doesn't have much i'm doing a real nice job dodging those they're not making it easy Well, as we kind of watch both of our runners, ooh, unfortunately, Otter... Oh, no, that was an intentional death. That's a death warp. Uh, as we watch our runners kind of backtrack what the others have done, uh, I want to take a second to thank Amarith for restreaming this seed, uh, you know, setting up the streams and all that. I'd like to thank uh, Ricky of Kokiri for tracking for us so that we can pay attention to just what's going on and, and all the items kind of being taken care of for us. As well as, as you, Kaysden, it's a lot of fun to just sit around and chat about Link to the Past. So uh, thank you very much, everyone in chat. If you want to, uh, go ahead and give the, a follow to both of the runners, the mentors, restreamers, all of that. Because everybody is volunteering their time to come in and do this. And it's all just a fun thing that we do in the community. So thank you all for being here, too. I think we're going to get a catfish check over on hub side, which we already know is not going to. At least catfish doesn't scam you out of a bunch of money like Zora. He just takes your. Yeah, and Otter doing the route that I was surprised to not see hub do with that book. You have the shovel, so let's check shovel before desert area. So Hub doing, or Otter doing both of those does save a little bit of time over the route that Hub took. Unfortunately, Otter also checked Agina earlier, so doing that walk a second time, not necessarily ideal. And yeah, chat bringing up, all we really have left is Purple Chest and Ice Palace. There's not many other options there. And Hub maybe going over to Pod. 
This walk, I don't know about you, but this walk always feels bad when I have to do it. When you have to walk away from Captain. When, especially when you don't have the boots. If you have the boots, it's not too bad, but if you don't have the boots, this is just... And the other thing about this seat is it hasn't given us, you know, progression past the hammer. So it's not like we have the flute and the mirror and all these other things we need to just go mode once we find that hammer. It seems like that hammer is locking a lot of the remainder of the items we need behind it. Yeah, it's really, it's the cape that's doing all the hard work. With both of our runners doing both Thieves Town and Desert Palace too, that's one of those checks that once they find that cape and get the hammer, that big bomb is something that can easily be forgotten for a long time. Just because... Especially having already routed in the pyramid check and catfish, uh, that's something you like to pair together with the big bomb when you can. But seeing as they've already checked that, a uh, pyramid check is could be or Yeah, and with the seed giving you access to those two crystals i always feel like if i'm able to defeat those first crystals early on the seed is kind of telling me to go check pyramid fairy and then i go and check pyramid fairy and there's nothing there anyway yeah if you skip it they guaranteed crush that's how this game works i feel like in my recent seeds the item has always been on zora except for when i go and look at zora Or in my case, and mimic. So after the runners finish this up, our options are Purple Chest and Ice Palace. I'm a little more inclined since you've cleared everything already. Do Purple Chest first because you'll then be kind of in the area for Ice Palace anyway if you go and grab that Purple Chest real quick. What do you think? Yeah, I, I like that play. I I don't know if I would end up just diving ice first, though, just because it has more um, items in it. But if you're going to grab purple chest, I think that would be. And Otter taking down Lambo. Very quickly with those silver. You know, Hub's palette for Palace of Darkness makes it a little hard to see where you have to put that bomb for that bombable floor. Yeah, it is a little, little tough to see some. And Palace of Darkness, I'd say the palette got it on point for that. That is a very dark uh, set of colors there for that dungeon. Yeah, it is aptly named. So with Otter completing Desert Palace here, I do believe that Otter is the first one to reach that Purple Chest Ice Palace kind of stand. Force though. decision. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where Otter chooses to go. It does look like Otter is going... And starting at Link's house, probably Ice... You know, and one of the rough things about a seed like this is the whole time that you're hunting for this cape. And again, uh, we're still not entirely sure if Otter has checked that bumper ledge yet. But the whole time you're looking I'm for this... I'm fairly certain Otter has, hasn't has checked it. So Otter doesn't exactly know what they're looking for. But fortunately, this is where they have to go anyway. 
so it's going yeah the, this the, the, the problem be, the problem becomes is well i guess not because once they find the cape purple chest or yeah the downside is that hub definitely knows that once you find the cape you have to leave ice palace because you can't beat it anyway i mean you could stick around and clear the rest of the chest but if you're going to have to double dip ice palace you're probably going to want to have the hammer to do so so otter might find the cape in this dungeon and still full clear it where hub would find it and immediately back out to go grab that hammer yeah, that, that's a very good point. Um, not knowing where the hammer is, that's definitely going to cost some time in Ice Palace because once you're in here, you've already done Icebreaker. It, with At least with Icebreaker, it's not too bad to do that full clear, but it, it's still a bit of a time. Yeah, Icebreaker guarantees you can check two chests. If neither of those chests has a small key, you do have to take a Death Warp. I think that Otter and uh, Walder here are talking about whether or not to do Icebreaker. And since you can't beat the boss anyway, don't even worry about going and hitting that switch. You don't need that switch hit unless you're planning on defeating the boss. So just head right over, do Icebreaker. And what's the Mario? It really, you don't necessarily need to hit that switch anyway. Since you can, if you're going to full clear it, you can just go and then place a block with the king. And this icebreaker, we see a lot of people do this, and that looks like a really good setup. That one frame left movement is a lot harder than it looks to really get down. Yeah, doing it with a menu buffer does make it a lot easier. We see Hub trying to do a hammer yump as well. And does get it. So Very both runners pulling off hammer yump first try. We do get a small key. Which is actually good for Otter. That the cape hasn't showed up yet. So if it is in here, uh, most likely they're both going to end up going in here. If it ends up being in the purple chest, then looks like CJ, your your call would have been the right one. Ooh, with that big key, definitely check the big chest now, and then after that, we'll check Ice Tea Room. And this is where not hitting that switch is actually going to save a bit of time. So we know that the cape or some other progression has to be in this chest or purple chest, I believe. That's all that I can remember we're down to. And there's, and the, there's cape. the cape. Otter's going to go ahead and check the big chest, which makes sense from their perspective. Oh, maybe not. Uh, Otter already checked the big chest. So. Oh, that's right. So they're down to a decision of bumper ledge and the... And Hub may be doing what I was thinking, which is grab that purple chest, save and quit, go turn that in, and then go do ice. Um, huh? I mean, for Otter, it's great, because the only thing left to do is check bumper ledge and do purple chest. Right. And I'd be surprised if he doesn't check bumper ledge first, just because it's so so much quicker to get to. So that, that unfortunate lack of information um, ends up not biting... Yeah, with that being in the ice tea room and the way the keys are laid out, you're gonna, I think you're going to last check that cape. And Hub has not done Smith yet, so not even able to do purple chest quite yet. So at this point, I think we can comfortably say that right now Otter, ha Otter has a pretty big lead, um, knowing, basically clearing everything and then getting this hammer that he's about to get. Still, 
lots of items that need to be found and there can be a lot of choices to be made for that but we do now have our hammer yeah and the way the seat is gone i wouldn't be surprised to see some more more tricks And though you can go and immediately beat Pod, there's only one item there. You you have a lot opened up to you after finding that hammer. And you do still have that purple chest and those hammer pegs. So we may see that next. We may see Pod. We may go back and beat Ice because I believe we only found two items in Ice Palace. So a lot of options now that we have the hammer. And it looks like Hub is electing to do a mirrorless smith chain all the way through. Oh, it's a little unfortunate I didn't choose to go to ice, but I, I do understand the decision because ice without a hammer is not, not. Yeah, now this hammer just gets you thinking. You know, you haven't found mirror, so do you go Tower of Hera now? Because the game has locked you from Tower of Hera by not giving you the mirror all seed. Is that where your progression is? Do you just follow, you know, the most linear path that you can find, which is purple chest and hammer pegs? There's a lot of different things that you can do here. And so a lot of ideas, the mentors probably talking with the runner, they're coming up with a game plan. It does look like they're going to go do purple chess first and we'll see where they go from there. I wasn't counting. How many items did we see in pop? Wondering if it was full cleared of items. I am not sure. Because if that's out of items, that's probably going to be the last place they go back to. But if there's an item there, you know, you could easily have mirrors sitting on Helmosaur. Yeah, chat pointing out. We do have the hammer now, so Magic Bat is in logic. Getting to it is a bit of a pain because we don't have a mirror. Yeah, the mirror doesn't block a whole lot of locations, but it makes so many checks so much nicer. And just a piece of heart from the purple chest. Yeah, and Hub now realizing Ice Palace is the place to go. So the good thing for Hub, though, is at least as soon as he finds that cape, he's just going to save and quit and beeline for that mirror. Um, not mirror, I'm sorry, the hammer. Otter is going to head back to Pod. I am expecting to see a big bomb pick up here. This would be the best time to take those big bombs up to that area, I think. Yeah, that's. I, I, I do like that play if that's where. So I know you did bring that up early. And it's early red does crystals. Look like it seems like happening. A, yeah, this could be another big play if something ends up being. I mean, even still, with what we've checked, Hammer does unlock quite a bit, but really, we, we haven't seen anything from Hammer Pegs, and we haven't dove too far into the Hammers. This is one of those checks that the Hammer unlocks, so I am a big fan of immediately going and checking a bunch of things that were locked behind the Hammer, just because your progression is more likely than not hidden behind the Hammer somewhere. Unfortunately, it did, and it does look like Otter probably going to go up to the mountain um, from here. Oh no, going to their house. I'd be curious to see where this next...
Are they gonna go finish up pot? We're back in dark. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like picking up a potion. It does look like ice is the play because that's the only place right now that I can think of where you need a po where you would want a potion to feel more comfortable to dive into. Yeah, Cold Stare on Master Sword can can get a little little away from you if you're not careful. So getting a you know, Ice Palace is that green pendant. Maybe just saying there's two items left in ice uh, because we have the item itself and we do have that green pendant to turn in. Opting to do that over Tower of Hera. That's some nasty logic, though. If the progression is back in ice. Well, our progression at this point could be on pedestal. Yeah, ice is clearable. Hera is clearable. They've already cleared moths, so it definitely. It does look like Hub did hit that switch. You know, it's such muscle memory to go and activate that switch when you're in Ice Palace. But it is good to remember, if you can't beat the boss, you don't need to hit that switch. Because the only reason we hit that switch is to have those pegs in that last room uh, on Hub's screen be in the right orientation. And that is our last item in Ice Palace. does look like Otter going to rush to the boss... And Hub picking up his cape as well, so gonna go get his hammer. You know, at this point, I would almost be tempted with the book to go and check pedestal right before. I know you're, you want to rush and grab that hammer, but it'll be interesting to see if either of the mentors kind of thinks ahead and says, well, maybe that's a possibility and let's just scratch it off our list right now. Yeah. Cause if they go and check it and they find out or something is there, and it looks like hub might be doing that a little stutter step and then walking that direction. I, I, I like this play just knowing what is there or ruling it out so that, you know, you know, is going up to Harry. Yeah. We'll have to see what's on pedestal, but definitely something when this comes up, I'd like to talk to both of, uh, both Hub and Irritable Penguin about is whose call was this and we'll see if it's the right call because it's something that I would definitely highly consider doing just because even if pedestal is nothing you can scratch it off your list you don't have to worry about it anymore and you can go and hunt for progression elsewhere. Just couch cat. But that does give you the peace of mind knowing that don't have to go full clear the rest of the dungeons unless there's items hiding on the bottom well and that may make a difference you know ice palace being green pendant there is an additional incentive to do that but that may keep hub from diving back into ice palace which if this green pendant isn't a progression item would really save hub a lot of time here yeah That could help or hurt, just depending what it is. And I have a feeling we're going to find out. I think if you do this play, you have to hard commit to it. You have to say, I'm doing Ice Palace to get the green pendant, so I have to turn it in right after I get it. You know, if you're making that gamble, you can't just sit there and let the green pendant sit in your inventory for the next 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, if you're, if you're gambling on something like that, you definitely have to commit to it. Just see it through and find out what. Yeah, so Hub going to grab his hammer has already done purple chest, so um, we'll probably do hammer pegs, and we'll see if Hub chooses to go up to the mountain or over to the Ice Palace area with this hammer. Ooh, ether. We need ether. We do. So that's a required. 
I think. Oh man. Do you dive TR? Well, we need the mirror to get we need ice the ice rod, rod. But yeah, oh, that's that's true. Yeah. But but there could be a mirror. Yeah, I I honestly think that's where you go next. You've got the medallion for. It. You you've you've made that gamble. I think it goes back to what you were saying just a minute ago. You hard gambled on Ice Palace for the green pendant. It paid off with Ether. I, I don't think it hurts to keep following that chain because that chain had to have been set up for a reason. We got the rest of um, TR's access other than the Ice Rod pretty early, and I, I know you've brought this up before that the Ice Rod only blocks uh, Trinex. It doesn't block anything else in the. Yeah, I when I mentor um, in these races, I bring that up. A lot of people wait to dive Turtle Rock until Ice Rod. And I don't like that huge delay time because if you're waiting till Ice Rod, you're saying your item is guaranteed on Trinex. But the other five items that you can get, well, four because we don't have the mirror, are not locked by Ice Rod. So Turtle Rock still has a really high item density. And if you think an item's in Turtle Rock, Odds are it's not the item blocked by Tri. Yeah, and not be, being that this is not Ambrosia, there might not even be an item on Trinex. He might just be there yeah. for his crystal. And yeah, chat bringing up: Do you do Hera before the climb or to before Turtle Rock? I think that Otter might. I'm not quite sure where Otter's going. Do you think he'll realize in a second he can't go this way? Maybe doing Spike Cave. You know, I, I would actually go to Turtle Rock first. Uh, reason being, if you're going to Turtle Rock, you're pretty much gambling that the mirror is in there. Um, the ice rod, you know where it is. So if you get the mirror in Turtle Rock, you have to double dip it anyway. Go back out to get your ice rod and then go back in to finish the dungeon. Yeah, that's a tough call. Um, without the mirror, you can't get back to the light world and it's a whole extra climb to go over to Tower of Hera. I... <laughs> With the knowledge that Pedestal is nothing, I still think that I'd be interested in at least checking the first floor of Hera. Um, if something is basement locked, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I would be interested just because you can walk over to Hera and then you could still walk back to Turtle Rock and still dive it. And if that mirror is in Hera, that's going to be a really big advantage. Yeah, but also then again, if Chat bringing up the point, if the, mirror, if the mirror is in Hera, then you can just grab that mirror, exit Hera, go get your Ice Rod, and then single dip Turtle Rock. So it, it just depends where do you want to gamble on the mirror being. And we're about to find that out right now. Its Otter is going to climb up the mountain. Hub really can't be that far behind. I don't think Hub is going to dive ice again knowing that it's not uh, not a ped seed, might just go and check Tower of Hera, which we know is not the right play. We do need that green pendant. We'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, Hub coming up to the mountain. I do think that we're going to see that Tower of Hera play from Hub. Yeah, you know, I, I forgot about the, the tablet. I, I think that actually puts a lot more weight on doing Hera first. And that dead rock just chasing us down. That's not pleasant when he decides to hang out on the bridge. You know, this could be really bad for Hub if there is the mirror in Tower of Hera. Because that's going to, every, so at this point, everything that we find progression-wise is just going to keep Hub out of Ice Palace longer and longer. Yeah, that's very true. We got our first item in Hera in the basement. And a big key. It looks like we're going to see a Hera pot. One of many different. Yeah, depending on 
who you talk to, I think I know of at least three or four different setups that I've seen for this. Yeah, I've seen three or four different setups with boots, without boots. There's the hook speed setup, just whatever you're comfortable with. It's good to have at least two setups, one with boots or one without or one that works with both. But yeah, and I do like the idea to do the Heropot and just assume there's nothing in the base. Is Otter going to try to bomb jump back across? So it looked like it for us. One of the fun things is that if you do that, you actually want to fall off of the right side of the big chest area there because it'll land you on that little ledge there. You can see in the room just disappearing. And then if you press right, you actually can get back to that door a little bit quicker. So if you do get stuck on that big chest ledge there, always fall off to the right because you can get back. I never. So you just clip through the rail, just like Icebreaker. Pretty much. And it looks like we're also seeing Hub set up for that Heropot. We haven't found that second item yet, so we'll see what Moldorm has in stock for us today. And Otta really utilizing that cape. If you have the cape, you can fight Moldorm a heck of a lot easier. And no items. So the item is in the basement for Hera. I think at this point, you kind of have to check the basement if you're committing to the Hera. At least I think I would. I would think for Otter, it's a, a much harder decision than for Hub because Otter really probably wants to get over to that Turtle Rock area. Yeah, knowing that he can go in there and do Turtle Rock, possibly get the mirror, come back and clear it, and have the last trip up the mountain until GT, I think that incentive is a lot higher. Whereas for Hub, if Hub doesn't find anything, I could see him skipping the basement and just moving on with other checks. And that may actually drive him back towards Ice Palace sooner, which could... Yeah, for Hub... It's a little difficult because at this point, not a lot of checks that Hub can do other than the basement of Hera and Ice Palace. So I think we'll probably see both of our runners do this. Otter doing a very good strategy that a lot of people forget. Everybody wants to do the AFK, you know, cutscene, go take a break of coffee in this room. But those tiles do one heart of damage to you no matter what your mail level is. And if you're trying to set up a death warp, that is a great way to take damage in that room. Yeah, it's time you're wasting anyway, just sitting there waiting for the tiles to do their thing. You might as well use that to... And just yeah, a just piece, a piece of, of heart. It's looking more and more like Turtle Rocket. Yeah, I don't know what else we really have in terms of our options. Hub is going to finish this probably do Tower of Hera and then have to go back to Ice Palace to find that Aether Medallion. And that's unfortunate because that's going to be yet another trip up the mountain. Oh, nicely done by Hub. Did get a Master Sword slash in before two of those hammers, which did put Moldorm into enraged mode. Used a pause buffer to make sure they were lined up correctly and then hit the hammer right as it was perfectly there. Very nicely done. Enraged Moldorm hammer is not an easy hit to get. Yeah, I, I can't say I've seen someone hit enraged Moldorm with a hammer before. That and so now the time has come for Turtle Rock. Question is, is it in the front or is it on the... Well... And see here we can see Hub is going to do the AFK strategies, but Hub doesn't really have a place to go after this, so this is fine. And one of the rough spots about Turtle Rock in this scenario 
is no mirror. And I've heard there's a story about you and Turtle Rock with no mirror. Something about Mimic Cave. <laughs> I don't know what you where you're getting your information, but it. All right. So with that, Hub has got to be thinking. I don't know where Hub's. Maybe Hub planning on going to Spike Cave, in which case, um, definitely would recommend to have taken damage from those. Uh, tiles earlier if you're going to go and leave Hera afterwards. So it's a little bit slower on Hub's side. Uh, does give Otter a little bit more of that lead. We do find the big key. We're really looking for Mirror or Flute, I would think, at this point. Or per perhaps the Boots and the Flute to get Bombos possible at least we know where it is but that's entirely possible i think that's a very tight window of things that would have to happen my money is on we're going to find the mirror somewhere in this turtle rock this seed has already had some tight windows of things that had to happen that have happened so I, I Oof. to an unfortunate death for otter yeah, those Chain Chomps are not very nice. They do a lot of damage, even on Blue Mail, so very easy to die in a lot of rooms, actually, in Turtle Rock. There's a lot of enemies that do four hearts of damage on Green Mail, so that still is a pretty good chunk. Yeah, and I, and I think the Chain Chomps only get reduced by one heart rather than half, like the tooltip claims when you... And there and is our, our a nice spot to find it because if you're going to continue, um, you could at least check Mimic Cave. But I agree with this play by Otter. You know where the Ice Rod is. Let's go grab Ice Rod and then come right back over and beat Turtle Rock. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Well, that cape with that half magic just makes certain things so Yeah, this is exactly what Otter needs to do. And Hub going to the last location that's available, which is Ice Palace. Not going to be happy when they don't find an item here and they have one more place to go. Yeah, that's... I, I imagine that's going to make Cub feel pretty behind. And I was just wondering, how do you think Otter feels at this point? Do you think they feel like they're far behind, or do you think they feel they're pretty on par based on kind of how wacky this is? When you get to these seeds where you're last locationing your items like this, I don't think you ever feel behind in terms of your routing, because you're thinking, okay, that's a pretty out-of-the-way last location. Me and my opponent are probably going to go and both get there at about the same time. But then you start to think, okay, well, just who's executing better? And it depends on the runner. Some of these runners do kind of scout their opponents beforehand, which may give them a little bit of confidence or, you know, you know, different things like that. So when it gets to this point, at least when I'm racing, in my mind, it's just, okay, whoever wins this race is going to race is going to be whoever executes better throughout the seed. I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I know anytime I start last locationing an item, even in a seed like this where it's kind of nasty and unavoidable, it, it, you can't help. I think it's just a tendency to assume that your opponent made all the right. Yeah, it's sent in chat also bringing up a good point. It's sometimes hard to tell if, if it's awful routing or an awful seed. Um, you know, both of us early on in the seed were talking about how we would we would have dove ice earlier, um, much earlier. But 
equally that could have been a terrible play because everything could have been in palace of darkness so there always is because it's randomizer an air of just randomness to it where you can't ever be completely sure you're doing the right thing yeah you could you could make the most probable plays and still lose any Yeah, our tracker bringing up a valid point in chat. Logically required double dip of Ice Palace, the pendant Ice Palace. That's definitely uh, not what you want to see. <laughs> no, no. And a double dip of um, Turtle Rock, but at least it's a crystal. And it wasn't far to go. Yeah, that's very true. And it wasn't like the mirror all the way on Laser Bridge or something. As we do see Hub fighting Cold Stare now, uh, getting a little low on health, has to be careful, has a couple more shots with that Fire Rod to get through this boss. And does finish him off. And handling it. Very let nicely done. Hub will now run over to Sahasrila. <sighs> He'll find his Ether, and honestly, even though it's he's behind, they're still both going to be in Turtle Rock at about the same time, I would imagine Hub will probably get the mirror and Ice Rod around the time its otter is through, but we're still talking about a Master Sword, Half Magic, Trinex, which is not the easiest fight, especially considering they don't have Red Mail. Answering chat, the hammer was cape locked on Bumper Ledge and the cape was in Ice Palace. And is Hub, it seems like Hub delaying that green pendant to check Lumberjack Cave. May have been a bit of a Hail Mary check, but if something was there, you know, just to see if he needed. Yeah, I don't mind that play earlier, but regardless of which I think Hub might be doing pedestal, unfortunately, before that green pendant check. Um, regardless of anything else, checking that Lumberjack Cave, you don't have any checks left other than pedestal and the green pendant. So you would... Look, looks like he's going over to Matt. Ah, uh, okay. I'm... I could see it. I don't know. I just think at this point in the sea, there's so no route, routing Lumberjack in with going to magic bath that I mean, it makes sense um we know where the answer is i think when you go in to ice palace to get the green pendant you, you need to commit to that because you could always do lumberjack and magic bat yeah i mean that's just my own personal thing lumberjack and magic bat is faster for those two checks so if you're going to do those i would do those before ice palace but again this seed is getting to the point where it's very easy to have your brain scrambled of what's still in logic. What could you have checked before? What, you know, what did you miss? They're, it's very easy to get, you know, kind of scrambled all over the place. So, oh, yeah, definitely. And it does look like Hub going to go find that Ether medallion as we see what's on Laser Bridge. So far, not a lot. And Hub getting his Ether Medallion should be heading right over to... Otter doing kind of a, a risky play here. Looks like not going to make that portal outside of the Trinex room. Or the Laser Bridge room. Grabbing the... 
Will you still be going in on full? I don't care how much health I have, I'm never comfortable on Master Sword Trinax. So, this is a tough fight, and, you know, a lot of these racers have been practicing these fights. Their mentors are going to guide them through, and we'll see if he does hammer strategy, or if he just goes for the 10 Master Sword swings, because that's how many it takes per head to kill with uh, just the Master Sword. Doing an alternating head strategy. I kind of like that. It's a good way to prevent um, the ice from going on the floor, but not wasting that first shot on the... Yeah, I don't know if I've seen that before, and I do like that strategy. I haven't either. I, I really like Because I've seen the fire rod first, where you go for that ice head first, and then you just kind of wait, but you were waiting that first cycle. You could hit that... Uh, firehead. Yeah, I like that. Might as well get the the two three hits in that you can while you're waiting for the the ice head to. Act. Yeah, and though it's looking a little tight, um, Otter does have both a red and a green potion here, so plenty of potions to restore magic and health. You just need five yeah, hits on doing a real good job on that first. Yeah, five hits with a hammer, or five sword spins, or ten slashes. All of which will finish him off. That looks like three. And Very four, nicely. five right there. It's definitely been some work put on that boss with Master Sword. Yeah, so Otter... More than a full turtle rock ahead because we're going to see Hub up ahead here. Find that mirror, go grab Ice Rod and come. It does now look like Otter's going to head over to Swamp Palace. Makes a lot of sense. It's got a lot of items. It's still a crystal you need to do. Um, I'm assuming Pod does not have an item in it anymore because the runners could have completed that at any point after getting this hammer and have... Yeah, it must, it must have been cleared of items because uh, at this point, if all you have to do is go to the boss, I could see that being the last dungeon. And Hub grabbing that mirror, gonna go grab Ice Rod. You know, this is one of those seeds that I don't really know if there's much more either runner could have done. Its Otter has routed it a little bit quicker, but all things considered, a double dip of Ice Palace Pendant is not something you're gonna put pretty high on your priority list. No, even with it being green pendant, it's just, it's not something that's fun to We'll say at the very least, at least they had that red cane to do icebreaker and make it a little bit less pink. So since so we're still looking for flute, do you consider skipping left side swamp? Or do you just full clear it knowing that you just need the one item and possibly two if you need a different deck? Um, it kind of depends on, you know, how many checks are left. I'm a big believer that if you feel behind, skipping left side swamp is one of the safer gambles you can take. 
I don't think Otter checked K45 before Swamp, which I almost always do just because I consider that part of Swamp anymore. It's right there, and if it has your item, you're guaranteed that you can go mode Swamp Palace. I don't know. Yeah. That, that That's one of those checks where if you don't have the mirror, that probably is the best time to route it in. If you have the mirror, obviously it goes with Smith, Smith Chain, but doing it with Swamp without the mirror... When they were they did smith chain earlier without the mirror so what well, did get orphaned especially because after swamp you're kind of split in two directions if you don't do it first you either have to go and do k45 or you have to go and do bombo's tablet and you have to make that decision whereas if you do k45 beforehand you at least have it out of the way so you know you're going to bombo's tablet after right in this specific scenario i don't think i skipped left side swamp because we found a compass and so I know there's at least one item. If I don't find a compass or a map, I probably am still skipping it. But we are going to see left side swamp for otter so we'll see what's over here we are just looking for the flute for now if meyer turns out to be bombos we also need the boots yeah then it goes from a one item hunt to a three item hunt although we do know where bombos is or if it turns out to be quake then who knows Uh, Bombos is on the torch in desert. So we do see one item. That's a piece of heart. We knew there was at least one, so we'll see what the second check is. And it is a tempered sword, so that is a nice item to find. So no progression, but a little bit of comfort having tempered and silvers now when you do get to Ganon, and that does make the fight significantly easier than just having Master Sword. Hopefully that big key is locked inside the big chest so you don't have to make the decision of whether you go back to it or not. Yeah, we haven't seen big key or map, so either of those could be in that big key chest, and you're kind of hoping for one of them, because you do not want to have to jump back into Skull or Swamp Palace, especially after you've already done Left Side Swamp as a time commitment. Right. There's the map. Oh, boy. I mean, at a certain point, the seed has to stop being mean, right? I mean, does it, though? Oh boy, okay. So there's the big key. So there is an item in that big key chest, which does mean a dive back into Swamp Palace after you've beaten the dungeon, which never feels great. Or orphaning an item that could potentially be your goal. Yeah, so at this point, we have a couple of mirror checks remaining. We have Graveyard Ledge. That's a possibility. We have Bombos Tablet. We have K45. And we have the Big Chest and Swamp. I'm trying to think of what else might be available to us. I can't think of anything else. We, we've cleared most of the map. I think even that... Uh, Lake Hylia Island, I think we saw that and it was just arrows or something. It wasn't anything too important. Yeah, we saw that early on. Um, right after they got the flippers. I don't remember if it was Otter or Hub that went there, but they went did all the flipper checks pretty early and went from Link's house. There was nothing on there. 
Nothing useful, at least. An otter deciding to go back in and not orphan this big chest. Yeah, I think there's a valid point at this time. You have so few things left. It's so risky to leave anything behind now. And that yeah, and it's huge. Quake. That could be huge. Hub, unfortunately, having some difficulty on Laser Bridge getting past this red hard hat beetle. Um, unfortunately, not using the cape, which is something you can do uh, to walk right by him. But does get past him with the Cane of Samaria block. Gonna take the safety door here, check these items, find out that... Eh, nothing really else is here and probably gonna follow suit to swamp uh, shortly after this Ooh, and unfortunately falling off the edge there that is gonna result in a death uh, before probably hub wanted and use a fairy we do have a I'm sure Hub would have liked to save that fairy for Master Sword Trinex, but at this point, not going to happen. Yeah. I, I think he'd rather use the fairy, though, than have to run back through team. Well, I think he did go... Or did he already just yeah. get the safety? I think he just yeah, did I was the watching safety. the other screen at the time. Okay, so still not a lot. Um, graveyard Ledge seems to be a possibility now. Yeah, that's been isolated for a while. Which, without boots or doing, if you happen to do the boots checks early, it's very easy to isolate Graveyard Ledge. And it never really feels... Otter being followed by... Yeah, at this point, really the only things that we could find that would give us any kind of hint is a mushroom... Uh, boots or flute. Um, we kind of know where everything else is. I'm pretty sure Otter even found a blue cane earlier on. So Otter not having a lot of items left in the inventory that could even be filled. And Hub doing the strategy that I think works for a lot of new players, which is even though it takes a little bit of extra time with 10 sword slashes, go for that ice head first, because if you can keep the ground from becoming iced over, that's very helpful in this whole Trinex fight. And if you're not comfortable with the hammer fight, it's a lot faster to do the sword fight and get it on your first try than to die and come back and do the hammer fight. Yeah, and it's Otter pulling just that 50 bucks out of the pedestal. So we do have a pedestal pull this seed, but it's nothing. The thief deciding to take some of those rupees. We already knew pedestal was dead, but Otter is going to give the people what they want. And the people want ped pulls. Yeah, I mean, at this point, all I could think of is Graveyard Ledge. Because we've seen all of Skull. I can't think of any other locations. It has to be. Just a friendly little game of two, who can get to 200 items first. We are going to get this graveyard ledge check. Again, looking for the flute. Other things that would give us more checks would be the mushroom or the boots. So that is all that can be here as far as we can remember. 
Yeah, it's either got to be a flute or a fa At least if it's the boots, you're right next to the two bootstracks. And we do get the... Oh, and after an hour and 53 minutes... The seat minutes, finally being a little bit... We are finally in go mode. Maybe. It has to be. I don't think there's any checks left to find the boots to find Bombo, so... I'm pretty sure that Meyer has to be Ether or Quake. Although it could be in the Meyer shed. It could be in Meyer shed. Oh my goodness. Or, or, uh, Oh, if we see Bombos, this seed is the seed that just never stops. The nice thing is if boots are in the shed, you can just go right to desert to get bombos. The thing that would be a bummer to find would be mushroom <laughs> to go get <laughs> boots off. Yeah, at that point you're just like it's like really? Cuz it's not even hidden at that point. It's just making you go a little bit further out of your way to do what you Yeah, I think most people, by the time in a seed like this, where they start to creep on that two-hour mark, it's like, okay, I get it, you're a bad seed, just let me... It is Quake. Yeah, Otter wanting to go and check that Meyer shed, but probably Walther saying, "You're in go mode. Just go beat the butt. Go beat the." Dog. But it being Quake does mean that that check in the Skull Woods or yeah, Swamp Palace big chest was required. So that means the double dip into Swamp was required, the double dip into Ice was required, the double dip into Turtle Rock was uh, required. Yeah, should be done throwing us double dips at least, finally. With only the, is it the one, two dungeons left, but Pod is just a clear. It's Yeah, logically Pod could have just been left alone for the entire game, though nobody would actually do that in a race. I don't think that logically pod had to be double dipped. There was nothing that was in pod that restricted you from beating it on a second trip. Oh, and chat doing it again. This is all fine and well until we find GT Big Key on Torch and the boots are in Meyer Shed. I could see Otter skipping Meyer Shed too. It's it's one of those things that it's close enough to check, but the chances of needing boots is so slim. But if you're gonna check anywhere for the boots before going to GT, that would be the I could throw out an even worse op. Oh no big key on the torch and then mushroom in GT <laughs> that is uh, pure that would just be evil. evil and with that I guess I'm attempting my first commentator yeah we can let chat decide if that would be too evil uh, chat can chat is the decider of, of all of that and I, I actually have faith that chat will say for the first time that that. I, I don't think chat would ever say something that's too evil. I think they'd be giddy. At... I will say Meyer is one of those dungeons that when you have the boots doesn't feel too bad, but when you don't have those boots, same with Swamp Palace, it just feels...
an otter finding the big key, but it's going to have to go back around. Yeah, realizing that they didn't have the small key to go up there, so just going to go through the big key. Now, I will say, at least there is a second path, so you don't have to go get that big chest for a small key just to go. And I believe Otter preserved his spooky by using sword beams back in that first. So even without the boots, still pulling off the spooky. Otter having a very nice um, Vidi fight. Getting his seventh crystal. Uh, I think he still has to go back and beat Pod. Oh, yeah, that's right. We still do have we to do have clean Pod. up we Pod. Do have it feels like it should be the seventh crystal on. You mean two hours and some change in? It feels like it should already be in go mode? Or already be up to Ganon? You would think so. Chat bringing up a point that I think is worth talking about. I think why why chat enjoys the bad seeds so much is I think we've all been there. You know, this is rough for anybody playing it. You feel like when you're over two hours that you made all the worst decisions, but we've all been there. These runners have done a really nice job, you know, executing a Master Sword Trinex fight for both of the runners very well. Um, and really, it's just an awful situation that everything seemed to be double dips and fetch quests and all these crazy things so this overall still has been a very nice showing by both of these runners very good to show that both of them can get through this seed and it's just going to be a long one no matter who runs it I have a feeling, even with a spoiler log, this would still be a very long season. It's Otter having a little bit of difficulty with my personal least favorite enemies of the game, which are the Red Mimics. Mostly because of the Red Mimics in GT. But gets past them, heading to Helmosaur now. And we will almost be making our way up to GT.
So Otter's working on actually getting his seventh. I think that means we have a game coming up. I do believe we have a game coming up. We have a couple more hits here, and I will tell everyone about it. All right, with that kill on Helmosaur, it is time for the GT Big Key guessing game. Wait for the command in chat to start up and then guess a number between 1 and 22. Whoever is closest to the right number of the Big Key chest selected by It's Otter will win. A uh, Mostly bragging rights. Uh, I don't think there's an actual prize, but you do get bragging rights, which is something. Well, that's not true. I think you get some uh, fake internet. And I can see already you're throwing down the three. So let's let's say this, right? We got to talk about hypotheticals here. If it is three, I'm assuming you're thinking maybe Hope Room, then Torch? Oh, that's exactly what I'm... So does that still stay as three if it's the 22nd thing picking up? <laughs> you know, that's that's a good question. <laughs> not. Well, let's hope it's not three. The question there is, does the Torch count when you see it or when you grab it? And I think we usually count it. I don't know. I think this is going... If this happens, it'll be a great debate that we get to have while they go and hunt for boots. <laughs> it's Schrodinger's guessing game. It's both three and... Otter doing what I do every single time I'm in go mode, I feel like, which is head over to Tower of Hera before realizing I'm not in the Dark World. At least Otter catches it before um, I do, which is usually when I get to the bridge where I have to hand. Well, I'll throw in my guess. My personal guess is 13. I like to... I like to go slightly, slightly a few checks over the average. Only reason I picked three is because of the scenario I laid out earlier, which honestly I hope doesn't happen to our runners. But do you though? You did put your vote in for three. I think you want it to happen. I, I do, and I. <laughs> I don't want it to happen to them, but at the same time, it, it would be just the icing on top of this cake. Okay, as Otter makes his way into GT, that'll be the end of the GT Big Key guessing game. And we will start to see here, we have one is a small key, and two is just 20 bucks. It does look like Otter is going to go full right, or at least check the four chests on the right here. I'd be surprised if it's full right. I don't really see very many people commit to full right. It's usually just the first. Yeah, full right is a little bit more reserved for Dark Magician strategy uh, routes, I think. I personally will go full right because I do those uh, that Dark Magician strategy. But I don't see very many people do it. That right side is not very fun to walk through if you haven't done it before. Especially without boot. Yeah, at this point with... So that last bridge is really slow to... Yeah, at this point we have... <sighs> Number three, four, five, and six... So it does look like the next check we're going to see is that torch. Everybody, probably keep your fingers crossed because this is the moment where we find out if GT is the end of the road. 
The one in 22 chance. Most likely is not. And it's just. Uh, and I'm sure Otter is breathing a huge sigh of relief at that so at the sign of that. Uh, just being a $50. It's not even a small key. So not even anything you have to worry about. I believe this chest is nine, followed by ten. If I'm counting right, maybe I'm not. Maybe that's eleven. Yeah, I think there's been eleven. When we do find the mushroom. There is that. That mushroom could be our boots. That one. So that was check number 12. We're about to come up on check number 13 now, which is my personal favorite check. I do think we saw Hub go and grab that uh, big chest, and it did have a small key, so it is going to be able to route up here, which is a nice little find to get. And we do find the big key. I believe chest... I want to say that was fifth. I was thinking... Chattel, Chattel will let us know. I thought it was 16, but I could have been counting wrong. It does look like that was chest number 16. So congratulations to all dog 33. They guessed 15. Oh, now it's just time to go kill a pig. The bad seed is over. As far as being able to hurt. So what do you think? Is this a seed you're going to send to all your friends? Um, we'll see. I don't. I don't know if I would send this to to people. The seed. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel like worn out just from watching the craziness that happened this seed i can't even imagine what it's been like for our runners yeah especially getting it two hours 15 minutes in i don't know if they're checking the race time gg looking for a you know a dot done or anything but you got it that's got to be yeah i think at this point is when Having a mentor there with you really does help because I think in most seeds, anytime you get over that two hour mark, no matter where you are, that whole climb up GT, you're just convinced that somebody's going to dot done right before you, you know, get to the top when you're so close and having a mentor there to just say like, just, you know, say it's just a race. It's just for learning. Don't let it affect your play. Yep, to just, just keep playing your game, do what you got to do and don't even worry Oops. about it. Uh, personally, I'm a I'm a fan of not even looking at uh, the race room. And Otter doing a very nice job of two cycling those landmos with the silver arrows. I also agree. 
That was fair. I, I also agree. I think that it's best when you're racing, um, whether it's a, you know, restreamed race like this, a tournament race, or even just a casual kind of race with a bunch of people, just close the race time and do the best you can on the seed. And when you're done, you're done. Um, worry about your placements later, because ultimately it's about playing and learning and getting better. So if you stress out about, you know, finishing first all the time, I think you're going to be disappointed uh, a lot of times when, you know, maybe you feel like you're playing really well, but you didn't you, you didn't god route it and, and stressing out about that that you know that takes some of your thought capacity away from focusing on the scene oro bringing up a great point uh this seed is great to send to somebody if you don't want to go to their wedding I think that's a perfect definition of what this seat has been. Otter making quick work of Moldorn. Just a quick slash and a spin, and he is no. Oh, and we don't get a check of that last chest. Oh. And is, I mean, what if those are boots? That could have been very, very important. <laughs> it would sure make this room a lot. Yeah, I, if you don't have the boots, I'm a fan of using the cape in this room. I do believe Otter still has a red and a green potion, so you can use some of your magic right here. Yeah, especially with half magic, it won't use that. And with the cape, you wouldn't even have to worry about the bumpers. Just go to the middle, walk up, walk. Um, I don't know if that counted as a double. It was pretty close for that first hit for Otter. That one definitely. Very nicely done. We're either... Oh, it did count as a double because that was six. It was a double, yeah. So Aga 2 is down and we're heading into GT... Or into the... This has been a good seed to watch for entertainment, for sure. I personally, if I was watching it, this is one of those kind of seeds that puts me into a 24-hour retirement from the game. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to play it. Yeah, if I was playing this seed, I probably wouldn't be playing uh, any more video games for a couple days. But um, very entertaining. It does look like Otter is going to have a victory here. Um really just can't can't say anything bad about hub it was just that otter did that ice palace double dip a little bit earlier um other than that both runners have executed very well their routes have been somewhat similar that ice palace was just kind of a difference um because hub had to do an extra climb up the mountain and checked a couple of other things i mean by the end of it otter pulled ped so it's not even like that check for pedestal lost hub any time it's just how it goes sometimes yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, too, because Hub made the really good play of checking and scouting the hammer early on. It just wasn't able to cap. Yeah, as we finish up our silver arrow shots here, as long as Otters does not fall off the bridge, get your GGs prepared.
And with an official race time.gg time of 2 hours, 19 minutes, and 16 seconds, it's Otter has won this week four matchup. We're going to check and see if Otter and Walther are going to be able to come in for an interview or if they need to go take a nap. Looks like they are headed this way. So as we get them in, Hub is now making uh, his way to GT. So not too far back, but GG's to Otter and Walther. Yo, GG's. So what did you think of this seed, and why do you hate it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Honestly, though. Is there um, something weird? <laughs> so at what point, like, while you're going through the seed, obviously it's a long seed. Do you feel ahead? Do you feel behind? Like, where's your mindset, you know, as you get the quake on Swamp, and you get ether kind of on Green Pendant, all of those things happening? How do you... How do uh, so for me, just seeing that, like, I'm checking the absolute last thing I can check, I feel like, oh, I must be behind. But I was trusting that, you know, Walter knew what he was doing. <laughs> and then when we got, um, what was in Ice Palace? It was like, uh, you got something. The cape. Yeah, first cape. Uh, yeah, you had your the, cape um, that led to your hammer. What did the pendant? It gave you E for, from the, it got you from e. the green pendant. Yeah. So yeah, so both of those being required was like, that was a big relief moment for me, like, Ice Palace needed to be done. It, like, I don't know. Irrationally or irrationally, like, that made me feel better. <laughs> that there's... It wasn't some, like, situation. So what I was worried about was that Hyrule, uh, which we did quite late, might have, like, boots or, like, hammer or some kind of easy progression that we missed for a long time. But that didn't really come to pass, so... After yeah, so we didn't exactly see on the restream. We were kind of talking about it. Did you know that Hammer was on Bumper Ledge before you got Cape? No. Or did you not scout that? Because we hadn't... I had no idea. We just went there as soon as we got the Cape. I think Walter was just figured, like, well, we, we have to follow our progression here. And we were like, oh, there's the Hammer. Yeah, I kind of forgot to mention that we should have checked that on our first trip over to Pod. But I don't think seeing a hammer there would have changed our routing that much, honestly. Yeah, we, because Hub did check it out, and so we knew where the hammer was for a good while, but had no idea where that cape was, and we were just kind of whittling it down. Um, you know, really liked the aggressive play back into Ice Palace, and once you got that, you kind of followed that up. Um, any thoughts on, you know, just... Were you worried about the boots until you went left side? Like, did you go right side just hoping you'd find the big key? Any thought ever that the boots were going to come into play there on the torch? <laughs> uh, when we walked into that room, I was like, hey, you know, <laughs> but no, I mean, we weren't really thinking about it. We, I wrote off the boots a while ago. I even considered they might be in Meyer's shed. I didn't even check it. I'm, I'm just... God, it would be ironic though if they were in Meyer shed, and that's the one thing we didn't. Yeah, because we were when we were watching it, looked like uh, you two were having a conversation because it looked like you headed towards Meyer shed and then opted just not to do it. So, um... yeah, I mean, there was no like disagreement. I was just like automatically walking towards Meyer shed because without thinking about it, I was like, "Ooh, just go get Meyer shed." But then I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't. I'm in go mode." I feel like at that point we had earned a skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the amount of stuff you guys checked, you definitely did earn earn the ability to skip. Just to prove that we, we don't have to 100%. It sure. <laughs> yeah, there was like, this was like a routing nightmare because there was like no good way of efficiently routing everything. Um, in a good way, and it was like pretty much only bad option after bad option for a long time. 
Yeah, so many required double dips too. That that always feels bad when you have to go in, especially like with Turtle Rock, where you see the ice rod out there, and you don't have the mirror yet, expecting to, you know, get the probably get the mirror in Turtle Rock, which you did, and then knowing it's like, well, as soon as I see that, I know I have to leave. Yeah, I was kind of lucky that the uh, ice um, mirror was early, because then you didn't have to redo. Yeah, much it could have been laser dungeon at least. Yeah. And then what I have been able to set up that portal outside Laser Bridge. No, nah. that... no, nah, because we have to mirror to get the ice rod. Oh yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> we need the mirror to be used. Yeah, so that. Yeah, so even though it's a double dip, at least it was a uh, relatively. Kind. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a bad turtle rock anyway, just because I had the death on the chain shot, but. That was probably like the low point of the run for me. That I I was not used to going into TR without full health. I'm usually going into TR like at the end of the run. So like I've I've hit mountain and I have full HP. Then I went into the chain chomps room. I wasn't thinking about the fact that oh I had like six hearts or something. So that was just a ugly mistake. I had a potion and I had you know. But other than that, like nothing really major like irked me about the run. It just took forever because of the seed, <laughs> which you can't like blame. Yeah, speaking of Turtle Rock, um, you did something in Turtle Rock that both Kays and I thought was quite interesting. Um, you did the hammer strats, but you started off with the uh, ice rod and hit the fire head and then moved over and did the other one, which we both really like that play because if you're going to do that other head first, you can get those first couple of hits in. Was that your yeah, call? Yeah, all credit to Walter. That was not my call. That was I am not that experienced doing hammer <laughs> trying So. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people, you know, going back and forth. Is it better to do the the fire head or the ice head first? Because you want to block the ice head from putting ice on the ground. And you guys just had the solution. Yeah, kudos to, to him because that was yeah, so that was a that was a really good play. I really and it ended up being a pretty quick boss fight considering like I know I can't really do three and two with the hammer like I've tried before. It's not realistic where I'm not like that quick. So just doing three uh, cycles sort of per head. Yeah, that was really. Collection rate 174. I just want to note screen. That's the highest I've seen in. Yeah, with this seed, I am not surprised. Um, are there any other moments of the seed? that you really, you know, like that really stick out in your head or any aha moments or anything like that, or just kind of all around, just kind of a slow grind. Uh, mostly that, I mean, there's a big relief when we realized after I killed blind that we didn't have to go back in with the hammer. Cause I'm sure we would have ended up doing that the way the seed progressed. So that was a small mercy of the seed. Uh, what about you, Walter? I've, I've been hot. Um, the um right after we did death mountain was kind of fun because we were like well let's go over to sashala too because it's most likely a, a lamp or a flute over there it was kind of fun to see both the lamp and the the bow as well to just go straight into eastern classic move always hiding a bow right next to the dungeon yeah we act yeah that, that's how we we actually talked about that during the stream of you know, going over there versus to Village of Outcast because I believe you had the Titan's Mitts and Moon Pearl at that point. Was that just because you were hoping to find the flute uh, still in logic over there? It was like partly that, but it was also um, like there could have been a scenario where it was Hammer over there instead and we weren't supposed to have Mitts yet. So it's it's kind of awkward going into Dark World without mirror and without hammer. So just getting those like free checks out of the way and most likely getting back into logic before going into the Dark World seemed to make sense. That was all his consideration. I never remember what's in logic, what I'm supposed to have, anything. Well, GG's to you, it's Otter. Um, that was one heck of a seed. That's for sure. Uh, do you guys have any, either Otter or Walter, anything else you'd like to 
mention anything coming up, anything to say? Uh, GG's to GG's to order, and uh, I'm glad I managed to wake up in time. I spent the first like uh, five minutes of this seed still waking up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, I appreciate Walter uh, spending his time. I know he has a lot of other mentees, so thanks so much. Thanks for getting me my my second win of this tournament, and uh, thanks to you guys for doing the restream and for you know, are you guys organizers? I don't know. Thanks to the organizers, <laughs> regardless of who. Because this tournament has been a lot of fun. I don't think we could have said it much better. Yeah, thank you to all of the people in the Go Mode community who make this possible. All of the volunteer commentators, trackers, restreamers, all that stuff. Um, we do see Hub getting to Aga 2 now, so we will be seeing Hub move on to Ganon here shortly. Um, and we'll probably have Hub join us for an interview after. Again, thank you, Otter and Walter, for jumping in, talking with us a little bit. You're more than welcome to hang out and chat, or you're more than welcome to uh, watch watch from the sidelines. But GG's well, and a good scene. I'll give him his time in the spotlight. I'll just watch. But GG. Yep. Yeah, GG's. So Hub finishing up on Agate. Yeah. As we go through this, you know, talking to Walter just then, I think that he said a very good point that's worth, you know, remembering is that just because in the quick, like the short scope of everything, you're saying, okay, well, I was up on Death Mountain and we got the Titan's Mitts. So, you know, Eastern Palace area must have a way to get to Death Mountain. You know, there are times where he brought up, it could be Hammer, it could be Mirror, it could be a bunch of different ways, and those Titan Smiths could be locked way further down the logic. So, it is always good to make sure you don't stray too far from the logic when you're actually running a seed, especially when you find huge progression items like the Titan Smiths. Yeah, you, you can very easily start to go down a rabbit hole, miss something that's in a very early check that, you know, would have just made the seed go Our, and Hub taking down Agatou, yeah. heading on to the big. We do have Hub finishing up here. Um, yeah, this one's been a doozy. I think that there's been a lot of just things that happened in the sea that you can't really... I don't think that there's been a moment from either of these runners where I really went... What are they doing? That's not a route that I would ever consider. Yeah, no, every decision that both runners made has been, you know, it's it's all made sense. There, there's been a few points where they had to make a choice, and it seems like they sometimes they made a different choice, but after they did that, they ended up just retracing each other's footsteps. So, you know, all the choices they made were very good, and they all played. They both played well. Um, it's just, it's just one of those seeds. Most definitely. We do see Hub moving on to what looks like doing a decent phase two here. Pulling out the cape. I like the cape strats on Ganon. I'm also... Especially big. with half magic. Just makes it so easy. Yeah, if you have half magic, especially if you have a blue potion, that second phase can hurt really bad if you're not comfortable getting those swings in. Especially if you don't have Butter Sword, because Butter Sword is six hits. That's pretty quick, pretty easy to do. But with Tempered, if you have the cape and you have a refill of your magic, especially with Silvers, just play it safe and get through it. As yeah, it's good to learn the hard way to do Ganon. And then when you're actually in a race or in a run of any kind, you know, use every tool you have available. Make the fight as easy as possible. But just be prepared to do it the hard way if you have to. Gets the torch glitch. Ooh, very close to getting knocked yeah, off. That the was edge. close. And the pig uh, goes very down. Nice. That last double was it very really nice. Was. 
Get your GGs ready for hub. And we will see if hub and penguin want to jump into an interview with us before we close this bad boy down. With an official race time .gg time of two hours, 34 minutes and 25 seconds, hub has finished second place. With this, um, I think we're finishing up restreams for today. I'm not sure about the schedule for tomorrow, but you can always check the schedule on the Discord. Um, you can add, you know, find a lot of the people in the community there. You can find people to race with and a bunch of other things. So highly recommend if you aren't already part of the Go Mode Podcast Discord. That is where all of this is done from. As we welcome Hub and Irritable Penguin, GG's. GG's. <laughs> Uh, Amarath, I'm going to need your address to send my therapy bills to after that seed. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. I would like to file a complaint. That seed was disgusting. Yeah, that, that was one heck of... The, the worst part of it, from my perspective, in guiding him to a lot of overworld was knowing that hammer was on the cave ledge thinking that they wouldn't make us double dip either pod or ice palace to get the hammer with the cape. So whoops. Yeah. That double dip of ice palace was just nasty because the route that you guys took is probably similar to what I would do, which was once you get that hammer, there's no way you have to complete ice palace, right? So let's go up to the mountain and do Hera because that's been locked behind this the whole time. We haven't found mirror, but no seeds evil. Yeah, yeah, it is. That scene was so ugly. Yeah, we were talking the whole time. There's nothing really routing wise that we were watching and saying, you know, this, I wouldn't do this or this doesn't make sense. On both sides, the routes made sense and the choices made sense. It just, when a seat is this crazy and this all over the place, it's just which weird, wacky play pays off first. And Otter chose to double dip that ice palace and, and gamble on that early so uh that was the big difference in this scene oh, okay yeah i thought he doubled i thought the decision was double dipping in total rock first because i felt like that was the key point in all of this yeah there, there was a couple double dips in this this um, it was a required this, you, get, you had to go in ice palace to get the cape to go out to get the hammer to go back to ice palace to get the green pendant to get ether off the hospital to go to turtle rock to get the mirror to get the ice rod to go back to turtle rock and that mirror also had you double dip swamp to get the medallion for Meyer. So. Meyer, yeah and that's the thing we didn't hit swamp we immediately went and got the ice rod so we avoided the double dip for swamp oh that's right But overall, um, I mean, how did you feel? Like up until the finishing point, did you feel like you were like at, at what point of the seed did you start to feel like, okay, maybe this is getting out of control or did you feel the whole time like this is just an awful seed and it's going to be a two plus hour seed for both of us? I think when we first had to double dip in the Ice Palace, I felt like... I felt very, I think I was more angry about that more than worrying about the race because I was like, if this is how the seed was going to run, hopefully this is the last time I, we would have to double dip. And lo and behold, we had to double dip into the rock. And that'll just kind of make me want to throw my controller for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and even though it wasn't logically required, it, it almost felt like it was a required double dip of pot. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, just yeah. just because going in there made you know it made perfect sense. It's like there has to be something in here, and then there. And I feel like if we didn't see the hammer on the ledge, there might have been a sooner dipping into both of those dungeons. But knowing that it was going to be a double dip, that kind of pushed me to say, let's make sure we don't find the cape somewhere else first. 
I would have done the same, just made the same decision as well. I would have stuck around in the overworld trying to look for the cape just to, just to make sure I didn't have to double dip. Yeah, I mean, both you and Otter uh, pretty much put off Ice Palace to last. Um, we, you know, Case and I were, were talking earlier about, you know, before all of this craziness happened, that you did have Titan's Mitts and the Flippers and a Fire Rod, but... You know, it was Pendant Ice Palace, and you can't even beat the boss to get the green pendant, so is it worth it? Um, honestly, that seed was just, you know, I think no matter what you did, you were going to last locate a lot of those things. Yeah, I think we last located four. Uh, yeah. It had, it had to be four. But overall, GG's to you guys. Um, anything other than... Uh, wanting to throw this seed immediately into the trash can that you sticks out to you you want to chat about um you know this despite this seed being like evil reincarnated i'm kind of glad i got the chance to at least do a bit more of the bomb jumps and successfully pull them off like hammer yup was a good good play on its own and despite me like messing up a little bit on Harapot, I was able to get that well, well done. I think that's it, though. Like this scene, this scene kind of just put that scene. This scene put me in a sour mood. I would probably be very angry about this scene, even if it's not in a tournament setting. Yeah, it was just not a nice scene, but but you guys played very. Yeah, I need to see if I have tequila. <laughs> yeah, I need a drink that too. That sounds like a good. Unfortunately, though, I think it's like, oh wait, it's seven. I can still get up and go. Well, thank you to both of you for you know letting us restream you and sticking no it through to the end there. GGS. Um, yeah, everybody who's who's around in chat, make sure to give our runners a follow. Same with uh, commentators, trackers, restreamers. I'd like to thank again uh, Ricky of Kokiri for tracking. And Amarith for restreaming this race. Uh, Kaysden for commentating alongside me. Um, Kaysden, what are you gonna do? Take I'm gonna take a nap, maybe. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna go play a seed. I think that's gonna be the plan for at least a couple. I think. But yeah, the nap sounds good. Finish up some lunch or I guess dinner now. Um, but yeah, no, it's just a thanks for letting me commentate this. It's been fun. It was a great one great race to watch um oh oh boy um so yeah as as we're just kind of wait I, th I think what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll wait for the, the credits to finish rolling here just to see what the item count was do you have a an estimate that you want to throw out there hub 182 i'll say 168 Ooh, 168. That I'm I'm gonna go is kind of split the middle. Otter had 174. I'm gonna go with 176. Yeah, I'm just banking on the amount of items that we saw and said nope and why. As that's always hard to factor in when trying to guess your collection rate because there's always so many items that you see and don't pick up or chests you skip and. 174. I know I definitely skipped catfish and king, not king stone, but uh, the graveyard ledge, as well as the shovel dig. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was the same collection rate. It was. Um, That's great. Well, with that, I would like to thank both of our runners, both of our mentors. Thank you to everyone who watched. Um, for everyone involved, I'm CJ. And you you've been watching the Go Mode Link to the Past Mentor Tournament 2020, week four. Um, have a good evening, day, afternoon, wherever you are. And uh, we will see you next time.